Okay, so this is E3720 week 4 lecture 3 and today we're going to start chapter 7 which is steady state error. Now as I mentioned in, uh, in previous lecture, I'll write some of the material beforehand or I'll copy and paste some of the material beforehand on my journal writer so we save time. I want to limit the lectures to 30 minutes. Ideally I want them to be 20 minutes long. So what is steady state error? Steady state error definition is kind of obvious. This is the difference between the input and output for a prescribed test input as t goes to infinity. And I'll underline this prescribed test input because in this book, and in, I would say like 95, well, I don't want to quantify it. In most practical control systems design, these are the test inputs used. So a step, a ramp, or a parabola, and the step could be a constant position as the physical interpretation. The time domain function is, I don't like to actually call this one. So let me fix this. Let me call this one times u of t because the assumption is t is greater than zero. Okay. Same thing here, t u of t and then one over t squared u of t. Anyway, so the Laplace transform uh, is given here and you should know all this from 3050. And one of the things I just realized is this in your labs, you'll be utilizing these test inputs, particularly constant position and constant velocity. But for now, let's understand the concept of steady state error for unity feedback system. So that's the goal here in the sense we're going to look at unity feedback systems. So consider this system here plus minus here is our reference input here is our feed forward transfer function g i'm not going to put the bar actually less writing ah g c and then i feed this back so obviously my error signal and we briefly discussed this throughout the course so far e of s is defined as R of S minus C of S. Now something very important, and I'll put this in red, in the sense, note, we assume closed loop system is stable, okay? In the sense, if your system is unstable, it is C of S is not bounded, uh, or C of T is not bounded, there's no point uh, I'm, it's not C of S, it's C of T. If the output is not bounded, there's no point in defining an error. It doesn't make sense. So we'll make this assumption. Now, what we would like is to get the expression for error in terms of our feed forward transfer function G. So let's do that. In the sense, uh, one implies that E of S equals, we know that the closed loop transfer function for C, I mean for running C is simply G over 1 plus G times R of S. Therefore, our error function is simply going to be our reference input times, well, it's over 1 plus G, right? So there is our error expression in the in terms of our feed forward transfer function okay so let's quantify let's determine now let us determine E steady state, the time domain, which is defined as E t going to infinity, which is defined as the limit as S goes to zero of S E of S. This is the final value theorem, but let me use the red marker in the sense we are assuming that the output is bounded or our system is stable like I said so I'll use red color to correspond with this 
I keep re-emphasizing the stability point over and over, not because we just covered stability in the previous lecture, but it is a common mistake which students make in the sense they apply the final value theorem without checking if the output is bounded or if the system is stable, which is a huge like atom bomb on your homework or test. Okay, so you don't want to do that. But anyway, so let us determine uh, the E steady state is defined as E as T going to infinity, which is equal to limit as S goes to zero of S times E of S. Uh, for different test inputs, okay. So case A is step input, which implies R of S is one over S. Therefore, E S T goes to infinity is the limit as S goes to zero of S E of S is R of S over 1 plus g of s, but r of s is 1 over s, which is the, so this is basically 1 over 1 plus g of 0. So this is E steady state, okay? And this is basically, doesn't matter what kind of g I have, that is I can have like a s to the 5 over s to the 6 plus pi s squared plus 3, for example, for g. So the point is, uh, note that, so notes, okay. Number one is G of zero is the DC gain. Okay. Because S is zero is, S is a measure of the frequency, so it's DC, okay. Uh, so let me write this as it is in the book. This is, let me just play the limit here as s goes to 0 of g of s. Number two, what do we want is the steady state error goes to 0. Okay. Therefore, number two above implies that we want the limit as s goes to 0 of g of s to go to infinity. Correct? This implies the g of s must have, must be of this form, yes? So let's say you have a bunch of zeros, s plus z n or m or whatever, and then you have a bunch of poles, so one is p2, s plus p k, okay? So in other words, we'll assume that m is smaller than k. That is, the, it's in factor, uh, like the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. But if you have any n greater than or equal to 1, so in other words, let me use a different color here. Therefore, uh, for ESS going to 0, step input need at least one pole at the origin or we need at least one integrator in feed forward path and this should now prove to you what I alluded to in earlier lectures in this course, that is, if you add integrators, uh, you minimize steady state error, okay? Recall we talked about PID a few lectures back, and I is the integral term, and I told you the integral term is used to minimize steady state error, and in this, in the case of the step input, an integrator in the feedback path, or in the feed forward path, sorry, uh, makes steady state error go to zero. So what about so the second case, so B is going to be ramp input, ramp input, this implies R of S is 1 over S squared, and now you can see where this is leading us, therefore E ramp as T goes to infinity is going to be limit 
as s goes to 0 of s times r of s, which is 1 over s squared plus 1 plus g of s. So this is basically going to be equal to, uh, so the s's cancel, and in the sense I'm going to get the steady state error for the ramp input as t goes to infinity. Uh, that is, the steady state error is the error as t goes to infinity. Uh, if you get uh, 1 over s plus s times g of s, the limit as s goes to 0, you get 1 over the limit as s goes to 0 of s, g of s. So this implies for steady state error, for zero steady state error for the ramp input, you need at least two integrators in the feedback path, right? So need at least two integrators, not feedback. We keep saying feedback. It's the course about feedback. Feed forward path. Okay. That's B. And for C here in the sense for C for the parabola you need at least three integrators in feed forward path and you can prove this by yourself before reading the book All right. I already read the book So that's about it. That's how you quantify steady state error for unity feedback. Uh, basically, in terms of the number of integrators, that's the rule of thumb. Okay. Now, let's look at a skill assessment exercise on page 349. And this is where we'll end uh, this lecture after doing the skill assessment exercise. So let me, hopefully, yeah, it's open. So let me just scroll down. So there are, again, details in the book, like the sources of steady state error. You should, again, be reading the book before the lecture. There it is. Oh, boy. There. So let's just copy this, paste it. Okay. A unity feedback system has the following transfer function. Uh, find the steady state error for the following inputs: 15 u of t. Uh, so you can. Uh, so here's a solution, right? So for, I'm just going to do a, right? Uh, B, just do it yourself, okay? So if you just look at g of s, you can see that the number of integrators in feed forward path equals 1, right? But before this, again, I messed this up in the sense uh, the first thing we got to do is we have to check stability. Uh, check stability. That is, is the closed loop system stable? So the closed loop system, well, you can just simply find the roots uh, of this. Uh, so here, check stability. So what we have is plus minus g. So you have g over 1 plus g, OK? And if we can, in the, we don't have to play that out with Horowitz. We can just find the roots. Actually, let's look at it in your book. Uh, yeah, the closed loop system is stable. So closed loop is stable. So again, that's the first thing we got to check. Okay, so it's stable. Now, let's look at steady state error. Number of integrators in feed forward path is one. This implies that the steady state error to a step input, uh, it is 15 u of t. Uh, let's see. 15 u of t is zero. Okay. However, the steady state error to 15 t u of t, we have to say is 1 over, let's see, here it is, 
to the ramp, which is T u of t, is 1 over limit as s goes 0 of s times g of s. So in this case, this is going to be the limit as s goes to 0 of is 1 over, yep, 1 over the limit as s goes to 0 of s times g of s, which is equal to 1 over, in this case, g of 0, which is going to be because the s here cancels this L is cancelled with this S. So you get 10 times 20 times 30 over 25 times 35, which is, let's see, 25 times 35 over 6. Okay, so let's see. Mm, no, what am I doing? It's 600. Wow. Which implies E steady state error. Or 15 t u of t so zero is equal to hopefully this divides out nicely. So to do that, uh, let me just use the calculator. So this is let's see, mm, let's see, 25 times 35. Uh, divide by 600, which is 1.45. Hold on, I gotta pause the lecture. We are continuing. Sorry about that. My uh, baby was crying. But anyway, so a couple of things I just realized in the break. Two mistakes. Number one, mistake number one is let me just put this in a different color so you can see that I made the mistake. Uh, mistake number one is this is I can't multiply 6,000 here. Mistake number two is I forgot the 15. So basically what happens is it's 15 t u of t. So if you go back to the derivation, you have a 15 here. It's 15 over s squared. So basically this becomes a 15, this becomes a 15, this becomes a 15. So times 15, okay? So now the steady chair due to the ramp is, let's find out. Because I was not getting the answer in the book, so I was wondering what's going on, 25 times 35 times 15 uh, divided by 6,000, it's 2.1875, which is the answer in the book, okay? 2.1875, and just to be uh, the steady state error, finally, to 15 t squared u of t is you're going to have, let's just derive this in the sense, it's going to be limited as s goes to 0 of s cubed times, no, 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 what am I doing? s times 15 over s cubed over 1 plus g of s. So this cancels, you get a square. The square cancels, uh, let's see. So the g of s has a 1 over s. So this becomes 1 over the limit as s goes to 0 of s, well, let's try it out, s squared times our g of s here is 10 times s plus 20 over s plus 30, and this is again a 15, divide by s times, oh, let's see, s plus Oh, wrong one. S times S plus 25 times S plus 35. There. Okay. So this cancels. But now you can see that this steady stator, because you have an extra, this is an S squared, you have an extra S here. So this tends to infinity. Okay. In other words, we cannot track parabolic inputs. In other words, the steady state error, I'm going to write it out this way. So this tends to infinity. So this implies we cannot track parabolic inputs. Let's look at the solution and then we're done. In the sense, the steady state error for step is 0, for 15 t u of t, you have a finite steady state error, and you don't have enough integrators, so this tends to infinity. And interestingly, for part B, 
don't have to do any work. When you check the stability, closed loop system is unstable, so calculations cannot be made. Okay. Huh. That's about it for this video. But before we leave, I want to make an observation that notice that do you notice the difference between this system and this system? You well, anyway. I thought the only difference was you added an extra integrator and we also had an extra pole. But uh, basically, the point I wanted to make was you can ask yourself, all right, why don't I just keep adding integrators, right? The problem is if you keep adding integrators to minimize or zero out steady state error, then you're going to, you can wind up making the system unstable. Okay. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. And that's about it for this lecture. See you next time.